I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I want to welcome you to today's Cisco certification video where we're going to look at some basic terms that we need to have absolutely straight in our minds, not just for our certification exams, but for working with real world networks. Because one of the toughest things, especially if you're just getting started with your Cisco studies, is just keeping all these new terms straight and all these addresses straight. You know, you've got all these reserved addresses at layer two and then many more at layer three. And it's a little hard to keep them all straight at first. So we're going to go over these terms. You're probably familiar with the basic terms, but we want to look at how these relate to today's networks and also, of course, help you pass your Cisco certification exam. Now, a broadcast, that's a data signal intended for everyone. And, of course, the term broadcast is not limited to networks. Uh, radio broadcast, that's exactly what it is. It's a broadcast because a commercial radio station does not send its signal in one direction and one direction only. Because what does a commercial radio station want? They want as many people listening to their station as possible so they are sending out their signal in all directions and hoping that everyone who can listen to it will do so. That's a broadcast and that's really what's going on with broadcasts in our networks as well because whether it's at layer two or layer three a broadcast is intended for everyone to hear. And of course that can be a problem because that's taking up a lot of bandwidth and that's why, as you'll see in a few minutes, we have routing protocols. Most routing protocols in use in today's networks do not use broadcasts to send out their routing updates. But a couple of important broadcast addresses for you to know. At layer two, we have frames, and their destination MAC address is the all Fs address. And if you're not familiar with hexadecimal, you definitely need to be familiar with it before you take your CSENT or your CCNA exam. But just as a reminder, the case does not matter. The value of each of these addresses I show, one in lowercase and one in uppercase, it's the same thing. Network layer broadcast packets at layer three, they have a destination IP address of 255 for each octet. So those are our broadcasts. Now at the other end of the spectrum, if you will, a unicast is simply a packet or frame that has a single destination. It's going to this server, or it's going to this host, it's got one destination and one destination only. Now we need a bit of a middle ground there, right? Because we've got broadcasts which are basically intended for everyone and we have unicasts which are intended for one particular destination. And that middle ground is a multicast. Now later on when you're pursuing your CCNP and definitely if you choose to go on and pursue your CCIE, you're going to learn a lot more about multicasting. And it is becoming more and more prevalent in today's network. So it's a good idea to learn more about multicasting down the road. But for right now, just keep in mind that a multicast is destined for a group, a multicast group actually. There's a certain group of hosts or addresses that should be getting it and we're sending it to all of them but we're not just sending out a broadcast where everybody gets it. A multicast allows us to get traffic to a group of addresses that need the data and not wasting bandwidth and processor power by sending these uh, packets to devices that don't need them. So multicast addresses you should definitely know for your CCNA certification exam and of course for your real wor world network depending on which protocol you're running EIGRP updates are destined for 224.0010. OSPF routers are listening to 224.005. And RIP version 2 uses 224.009 as a destination IP address for routing update packets. RIP version 1 uses the broadcast address because that's one of the drawbacks of RIP version 1 is that it uses broadcast to send out routing update packets probably noticed a little bit of a pattern there in those addresses and I'll go back to them for just one moment. You can see that they all begin with 224. Multicast addresses don't have to begin with 224 but many common ones that you run into with Cisco networking do have a first octet of 224. The entire range of addresses that I've got here on the whiteboard is reserved for multicasting and this is the class D address range. And just as with broadcast packets, these multicast packets are not going to be forwarded by routers. 
Now, as we all know, as you progress in your studies as well, you'll see there are exceptions, and we can we have to configure these exceptions. But as a rule, broadcast and multicast packets are not forwarded by the routers themselves. Hope you enjoyed this quick look at broadcasts and unicasts and multicasts. I invite you to come out to the website, www.thebryantadvantage.com. Plenty of free material there for you to look at, over 250 free illustrated tutorials, videos, practice exams, free daily questions on the blog, all kinds of great stuff. I look forward to seeing you out there. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you at the website.